Welcome everyone to a new video series. So I've been playing a lot of Age of Empires tournaments on many different Discord servers this year, which has meant that I've played on many maps that don't really get a lot of action on the ranks ladder. So uh, I really do enjoy playing on these maps and developing an understanding of how the map works um, and choosing sieves that work well on those maps. And I noticed a lot of these maps don't really have much support online on how to play them. Uh, and sometimes when they get into the ranked rotation, people really don't like playing them. Uh, and also a lot of these maps don't even get a chance. They don't get voted in at all. So in each video in this new series, I'll be looking at some of these more obscure maps. Uh, I'll look at the main focus of the map the uh, general principles and the strategies and even some of the sieves. So the first map that I will be looking at is Water Nomad and I'll go through a few things uh, for this. I'll be looking at the, the map and the starting units. I'll be then looking at some of the principles of the map and the strategy on Water Nomad. Uh, I'll then look at a game recording that I played in one of the recent tournaments. And finally, I'll sort of do a bit of a sieve tier list, maybe explaining uh, my pr preferences on the, on the uh, map and maybe some possible strategies that I have yet to try. Uh, keep in mind, my ELO is around... 1300 um, so I'm obviously not the best player but uh, I'm starting to develop a bit of a game sense uh, when it comes to some of these more unusual unusual maps so let's um Let's firstly get into uh, one of the games here. So I've loaded up uh, Water Nomad. Uh, recently it's in the no More Nomad Wars League Season 3 hosted by Paradox. Uh, Water Nomad is in there. Often Nomad maps in tournaments are played without the treaty, which is different from the ranked pool. Um, because in the competitions, you can actually just enforce rules such as no vil fighting in the first uh, three minutes or whatever. Pretty much no vil fighting until the town centers are up. Town centers need to be placed far away from each other. Uh, and it's just a little bit better. Again, that is only on tournaments. It's a bit hard to enforce that on ranked. So I've got a custom water nomad uh, with no treaty. And I'm just going to play as the Saracens against the Italians. And we'll just have a quick look at Water Nomad. Now, the first thing I will do is I might just do a quick pause here. You can see it is a Nomad start, so you are starting spread out across the map. But the population is quite large. So normally on Nomad, you'd start with three, but we've got 13 here. We do start with seven bills and six fishing ships. So Water Nomad is a really fast start. You often get up to feudal age in five to seven minutes, realistically. You'll also notice there's quite a lot of buffalo around the place and the starting resources is just standard, standard Nomad. You get the extra town center uh, resources added on. Now on this map, you can see there's a lot of this hybrid terrain which you can walk on you can build on but it's also water and what you want to do on this map is you do want to start off by building a town center you want to also build a dock uh, and you also want to build two houses uh, that is the standard start the reason being you have the six fishing ships from the beginning you want to get that dock up straight away now, what you'd probably want to do is find a good spot 
where your villages are close by and build a town center on a wood line. Um, I'll just, all right, I'll just go down here for now. As we are just sort of learning the basics of the map. I've got a nice town center placement here near the uh, wood line and there's also gold nearby. You also want to get a dock up straight away. You want to get a house, a couple of houses up. Now I'll send all my fishing ships near my dock. And generally speaking on this map, you'll want to ensure that you have your town center up as soon as possible. You want to be collecting predominantly food in the early game in Dark Age. You want to be collecting predominantly food. You do need to have some wood income because you will only have enough wood for the two houses, the dock and the town center. So you can build two, vill uh, two villages before you get housed. So I'll queue up the villages, but what I might do is send to wood at first, just to get that house up. Uh, don't need this. You'll notice you'll have a lot of water buffalo. You want to use some of them to scout the map, but most of them you can actually send to your town center. You can see I do get housed there. I've got enough for another house. And the goal is at the start to get up to the feudal age as quickly as possible. And we'll have a look at an actual game wreck a little bit later on. Your, your dock will be enough for one building, but you will need a second uh, building. You probably want to go up before 20 population. And yeah, I'm a little bit, I'm not following the build perfectly as of yet, but just to give you an idea of the map at the moment. So I'll just have another quick pause here. You can see realistically, there's just wood lines, gold, um, a lot of fish and a lot of buffalo. And there's no, there's no berries, there's no hunt, there's no anything like that. So the general goal in the dark age is to get up to the feudal, feudal age as quickly as possible. You want to be sending most of your villages on wood. Your fish will be on food. Sorry, you want most of your villages on food and your fishing will be on food. You do need enough villages on wood to get that extra house population space up. And you also want the 100 wood for a um, second camp. Probably only need to build a total of three houses in the Dark Age. Uh, you want to be clicking up no, no later than 20 population. So I probably have wasted a bit of housing space little wood on that on that extra house there but again at the moment we're just looking for the general principles so I do have enough wood now and I might just build a lumber camp there force force that one down and mm, I might just idle the TC this time as I'm pretty close to clicking up and there we are and I'm up. So I wasn't really putting too much effort in, but we're already at clicking up around the five minute mark with 20 population. So you can see just how quickly getting up to feudal age is on this map. A critical aspect as well. Once you do click up to uh, feudal age, all these food villages, send them to wood. You also want to send a few to gold because this map is highly dominated by galleys. Fire galleys 
do not work. Uh, it's the short, short answer there. Uh, I've had not much success with fires, uh, even as the Byzantines, because of just how uh, difficult it is to make the fires uh, close the gap. The galleys can shoot the villagers outside of the TC range. They can, uh, they can really snipe the fishing ships really quickly. And then you just run away from the fire ships. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just pretty much, yeah, waste all of this. Uh, I don't need this many on gold, but see, look at the food. I've still got the six, still got the six fishing ships uh, going up. I want to have enough wood for a second dock and I want to build uh, galleys as soon as I click up. So it's not the most efficient lumber camp at the moment. I'm not sure what's going on there. And I will just queue another villager and I'll build another dock. You more or less want your docks, I guess, depending on the situation, but you sort of want your docks in a good position to produce galleys nearby. So I'm just going to produce galleys here. I can see the opponent is here. Uh, another another hint on this map is you probably want to have a select or docks hotkey. Uh, I have the hotkey L selected, which means I can just press L and queue up my galleys. I've also changed the hotkeys for the transport. I got rid of the transport. Fishing ship is still Q. Transport is nothing. I do have my galley as my second button, so W, and then fire E, and then next is the demo raft. So I can easily queue up galleys, fire galleys, no matter what page I'm on. That's that's what I find frustrating with the dock. There's the two pages, so re redo your hotkeys if you are going to play Water Nomad. Now, I've not got enough on uh, wood at the moment, but I'm going to queue up two galleys. I just want to queue up at galleys as soon as possible. Bidax can be useful, um, so I'll get that now as well. And I just want to continue to queue up galleys. Now, if you are first at the Feudal Age, then you're in a really good position. You do want to just send your uh, galleys forward. Uh, if the opponent's in the Dark Age, the only thing they can defend with is the town center. So you just want to go find those fishing ships. And I did get housed, my mistake here. I will uh, guess I'll get Loom. All right, so I'm going to go forward and find some, find some opponent. Uh, villages, fish. Don't forget to keep adding in houses. And I'm still pretty confident the opponent's still in the dark age so I can send my galleys forward. And you'll want to continue just amassing military units. I should have probably scouted my opponent with the water buffalo a little bit more aggressively here. They must be up here in the north. But you can see I've got a pretty good economy at the moment with with the galley production. And I don't care about this decaying water buffalo. Again, the AI is not as predictable. I haven't found anything yet. Oh, here we go. And I'm finding the fish. Oh, it looks like they haven't even built a town center. I'll, I'll want to continue adding in uh, a few more docks. And I have found their town center. 
and now they're in the feudal age, but my time in the feudal age means that I should have had a lot of time to add in military. And if I just keep the pressure on, there's no way for my opponent to come back. And I did get housed again. And that is the general premise of the map. So Dark Age, you want to be as quickly as possible to the Feudal Age. You need to make sure you get the dock, two houses and town center up immediately. You'll probably want to add in one extra house and maybe a lumber camp or a mining camp, depending on your town center placement. If, if there was no gold nearby, I obviously would have used the 100 wood on a mining camp instead of this lumber camp. I went for the lumber camp just to get that bit axe for uh, a quicker thing. Now, also, at some point you want to add in a blacksmith to get fletching. And I've gone up to three docks, but you could go up to four or, or more. Getting house is a big problem. And also, the next critical phase of the map is the transition into the castle age. So often, because you're not building a mill, you forget to do that and you need to build a, a mill to get the market. Um, because you won't want to be adding in a barracks or, or stable. There is no point going for land units, archers, knights, no good. This is this is a galley, galley dominated map. So, we'll, uh, we did have a quick look at the map and the starting units and we've looked at the principles and strategy we will go to a game recording um, which is one that I've played recently it was in the first round of the um, yeah the, the Nomad Wars League as I was saying on Paradox's Discord um, I'll just load up the game now So we'll have a look at a game recording and then we'll have a look at a Civ tier list, uh, which will be quite useful. So here we go. And we are in a um, game recording here. So you can see here, I do have a difficult start looking at where to move all my units and all my fishing ships. Um, I actually use my select or idle villagers hotkey here at the start. And I try to look at the mini map to see where approximately most of my villagers are. So I look for where my blue dots turn to white. Then I use uh, my villagers near the majority to find location of some some wood. And pretty much I go straight to wood. Gold is a bit of an added bonus. You want to get that TC down. You can see I've got five villagers on the town center. I haven't optimized my strategy here. I hadn't played Water Nomad in a while. So this is not the perfect build, but it, it is a reasonable build for playing at around 1300 or below. I've got that dock up even before my town center, which is critical. I've got my six fishing ships collecting straight away. And I don't have too many buffalo at the moment, but I am using the buffalo to explore the map. And fortunately, I did see the location of my opponent uh, where their town center was being placed. So I've got a really good uh, sense of where the opponent is going to be. You can see I'm adding in that house. I do get housed for a short time here and again just a reminder two houses a town center and a dock first with your starting wood you want to build one extra house and either a lumber camp or a mining camp once you've got that extra you'd only really need to collect 125 wood for that for that extra amount 
so once you've got that 125 wood, you should send everything to food. And it's a little bit of an unfortunate water buffalo start. Sometimes you end up with 30 water buffalo. And, and in this case, I've only got, well, I've only got two extras spare. I do go for another house here, which again, in retrospect, is unnecessary. I would have had the wood for the uh, second building. And the food is pretty much in. But you can see you don't really need too much water buffalo at the beginning because of the fishing ships here. You can see I've got seven seconds of idle TC time. I do have the, the food. And again, if it was a more optimized build order, maybe I'll release a build order video of this map. But I am sending my fishing ships around and here's the second building. That's the closest gold. It's not the best because I, of the location of the town center of the opponent. It's a little bit exposed, so it's critical that I get up first. But you can see both of us are a little bit out of practice on this map. It was the first round of the league, and I don't think either of us had actually specifically played this map to prepare. But we had played it in the past, and I've clicked up now. A um, bit of idle TC time, uh, the population, a little bit too many villages. Um, so you can really see I could have increased my uptime by maybe a minute and a half or sooner. Building that extra house was unnecessary. I think what I need to do here is because the wood's a little bit inefficient now, I am actually going to send these villages and build a lumber camp maybe here. But you can see my opponent is still yet to click up. They've got um, an extra villager at the moment and I'm adding in my second second dock. So I'm, I'm putting it on the front. I'm obviously feeling pretty confident with my uptime at the moment. My fish, my opponent has scouted my gold. So they'll obviously target that there. And I'm sending, I've got four on gold, five on gold, probably a little bit too many on gold as the galleys do require a lot of um, a lot of wood and not as much gold. And that's why you want to go for the uh, wood more than normal. Uh, fire galleys cost a little bit more gold and a bit less wood than regular galleys. So instead of going, I did un I did uncancel I did cancel one of those galleys to get a lumber camp up and you can see here I've got no villages on food. My six fishing ships is more than enough. And again, my opponent's still in Dark Age, so I'm gonna be very aggressive with these galleys. There's no there's no defense that my opponent could have. I spot one one dock here. Find one fish. Meanwhile, look at that, my village account on wood is just skyrocketing. The six are just the fish. He's obviously microing pretty well. I'm looking, looking for the gold camp of my opponent and the fishing ships. And here's the gold camp. So this is going to slow down uh, the opponent's galley. They are up, but they can only I only click on one galley and I find the fish and I'm I'm already at a four to zero four to zero galley count and I've got two kills already and my opponent yet to actually get a single military unit out yet four four eco kills already he does get bit axe and he is floating a lot of food but because I was up so quicker, so much quicker, I did get the fi the fishing ship uh, kills, and now he's sort of forced either to send send villagers to food to maintain the production. Even this building a defensive tower, defensive towers don't really work on this map, particularly ungarrison towers don't do much damage. I'm just camping these villagers. He gets the tower up, I run away, but 
Look at this, seven to one in terms of galleys and being up so much quicker, I'm just dominating this map, this game already. And I think my opponent was just a little bit more out of practice than I was on this map. I didn't play it perfectly, but I'm just in a really strong position. I'm adding in fletching, but my eight, eight galleys, nine galleys now to two. And if we look back home, if I look back home, I'm adding in a third dock. I've got plenty of houses. I'm sort of getting a bit of a wall up going. He's forced to go for fires, but I, I don't, I don't mind this. Maybe he should have waited back, but yeah, really, really effective push. I'm delaying his blacksmith significantly here. I should probably send these, these galleys in from the other side. But the reason why galleys work so well is because this defensive tower, I can still sit my galleys here, harassing the wood line here. Another defensive tower, I can probably sit here and harass the wood line there. I do get a little bit squeezed here. I do need to be a little bit careful for the counterplay. But the Feudal Age is completely mine. I am starting to think a little bit about Castle Age, but... My main goal is to just continue producing galleys. My galley count, I haven't lost one galley yet. Whereas my opponent has lost five. He's lost five eco and five military. And this is really difficult to defend. You can see he's build a market. I think I do consider building a couple of fires just to take out buildings here, maybe destroy docks. Uh, yeah, back home, add in the mill. You can see I'm thinking about uh, Castle Age now and I've sent some bills to, to food. But constantly macroing behind, but trying to find some pickoffs here. I don't want to let my opponent back into the game. He's forced to go into farms, which is really not good. He's got one fishing ship left. He does get a fire galley in behind. I think villagers are pretty resilient against fire galleys. Destroying that with villagers really easily. So that's another reason why galleys are much better. They can pick off Phil's ships and fishing ships really quickly. Fires are great for dealing with galleys, but not on this map when the galleys can run. And here comes the market. My opponent is dwindling in terms of uh, eco. He's behind by four and I've got 16 warships to his zero. So this is quite a, a pretty smooth execution of the game plan on this map. I'm using the market. And I've clipped up to the castle age with 16 galleys at this stage. He's killed three units of mine. But it doesn't really matter. I still don't have um, double bit axe. Um, maybe just getting the instead of spending the wood in the dark age on the lumber camp, I did spend it on the mining camp. But yeah, I should probably think about getting double bit axe at some point. He does go for some demos here and I'm, I'm spotting it. So another thing, demos can be really effective on this map for taking out vills. Uh, that is sort of your maybe alternative strategy if you are behind in some way going for the going for the bills with the demo ship but yeah I'm adding in some walls as well so I'm in a pretty safe position I've got huge I've got 18 military and I'm in the castle edge in 30 seconds demo comes in behind I sacrifice one villager 
to save the rest. But we might just speed up this game because it should be done. Now, once I'm in the castle age, adding in War Galley, I should think about getting Bodkin, but now that I've got Galley and Bodkin, I can outrange and sort of just blow through, blow through here. I've also started to add in a bit of a wall up. It's not the best. There's a few holes there, but my opponent is on the way up to Castle Age and I'm just shredding through here. Fires were again to take out buildings. I'm on half speed there. And he does call the GG eventually. So that was the game recording. Um, not the most efficient build order from me, but I was just demonstrating the execution of the principles there. Getting getting to the feudal age quicker is the critical thing here. This is a galley galley dominated map. I might just have a quick look back at the map here. You can see. Uh, your first town center will sort of, I guess, run out of resources in terms of wood line around, yeah, around the 20, 20 to 25 minute mark. And if you haven't got a good grip on the game, you might find it difficult to expand. So I think I was planning on adding in a, um, a... Uh, lumber camp up here. I did use the market to sell the stone just to get up to, or maybe I was just producing galleys, small galleys. So yeah, what we'll do is we'll now go into the, um, the sieve list here. So what I'll do is I'll turn these off and look at the Uh, tier list here that I've got. Now, keep in mind, this is sort of more of my personal opinion. And this might not be the most, most, uh, might, might not be the best tier list for this. But what I've done is I've just graded it picks. So if you're playing in a tournament, these are the sieves that you want to pick first or ban your opponent from playing. Uh, if all the sieves are gone, I've got a backups list. I've then put an interesting bonus. So these are some sieves that may have some bonus that caters towards the map. I've put playable as in nothing special, nothing bad. And then avoid, I've put a couple of sieves here to avoid specifically. I might start with those three sieves to avoid. Um, the first one I've picked is the Chinese just because of the, uh, the wood there, I guess it is compensated with the, uh, the town center has extra population space, I believe, but same with the Huns. Um, yeah, you don't want to pick the Huns not having the, the wood at the start for the town center and the dock. That's, that's definitely the worst of the worst and I've also picked the poles which are uh, the Huns are the worst but the poles because of the um, fall work I think yeah I don't know it's not a huge problem but just because of the fall work it the mill costs an extra 25 wood you do get the extra house but it's yeah it just I don't know may slow down your castle age time as you click up um, I'll just, yeah, I'll just move in a couple of sieves here that for various reasons have no specific bonuses. So Hindustanis, Burgundians, Cumans, uh, Goths as well, uh, Franks, the Lithuanians, the Magyars, the Mayans, 
the Mongols, the Sicilians, and the Slavs. Each of these sieves, yeah. Nothing really hurts you on here, but nothing really helps you out either. So let's go straight up to the top, top tier here. Now, Malay are considered, the Malay are considered one of the best sieves on this map. Due to the nature of it being a galley war, getting up to feudal age is the most important thing. The quicker you up to feudal age, the quicker you can mass the galleys. You can snipe the fish if you're up a minute earlier, but you can also just have a military advantage from the get go. So Malay with the fast age up times, really, really good. Um, Italians have a similar, similar thing. They do have the cheaper fishing ships, but the key, the key bonus from the Italians is the cheaper feudal age and castle age, age up techs. Uh, you can get up maybe a little bit quicker with the Italians. You can send less to food and get more on wood earlier to get that second building up earlier. And then because it's cheaper, you don't have, have to mass as much food. The cheaper fishing ships may come into play, but in my experience, not so much. You could some, I have seen some players add a couple of fishing ships in the dark age, uh, to have a bit of an eco advantage. But again, if you add the fishing ships in and the opponents in the feudal age a minute or two minutes earlier than you, and you lose, you lose your fishing ships. Well, that advantage is now, now gone back and they've got the military numbers. Uh, the next one is probably my preferred sieve on this map. Saracens, for a few reasons, their galleys fire quicker. Uh, so just in a numbers game, you do get the extra um, bonus there. Uh, also, another thing is with the market bonus, 75 wood on the market. If you forget to add in the mill and you go to add the market, you need to build the mill for 100 wood. But then the Saracens... 75 wood it's sort of it's a nice bonus that uh i think helps out players uh it helps me out if i forget the mill guess what that market doesn't i'm not too slowed down i guess also using the market selling the stone for a lot of gold there really really good uh so saracens with the good good choice there um i guess in backups, Vikings are quite good. They do have the um, the cheaper docks, and they do have um, the cheaper warships. And because it's not a fire map, the fi the fire galley, the lack of fire galley doesn't um, really cause a problem. So, yeah, Vikings are a good good choice there. Um. I've also put Dravidians as a good backup. Getting the 200 wood on on age up means you could maybe produce a galley straight away if you didn't have it, or that second dock, you might be able to produce from two docks quicker, uh, or even getting an early blacksmith down um, means you can get fletching in pretty quickly as well. Um, but that's, that's a good bonus option there. Uh, I guess Bengali's not too bad either. Um, I've not really had too much experience um, playing the Bengalis on this map, but I think probably a good backup. Uh, I will just open up the tech tree for some of these sieves. Uh, yeah, getting, getting the regeneration health might be useful, but probably not. But getting the extra two villages means adding the two villages to a, to a lumber camp on age up means you're a little bit smoother getting, getting those galleys out. Uh, let's have a look here. The Portuguese, uh, also really good. They have the discount on the gold cost of the ships and they also have more health on the ships. It's not too noticeable. Uh, obviously the micro will be more of a factor, but that might come in handy. Um, they did get a recent buff, the 
upgrades coming in a little bit quicker. So maybe you'll get the uh, upgrades just a little bit quicker. And I've put Byzantines as a backup. Obviously, they're more of a fire ship option, but uh, yeah, I've just put them in there. Maybe they're, maybe they're not a great sieve on this map. Better used in other maps. The, the next sieves have some sort of bonus here. Um, Britain's with the faster, uh, sheep gathering on the water buffalo might be, might be useful. I've not played it myself, but that could be a good option. Uh, so I've put them at the top of the, uh, the backups, backups there. Uh, the next sieve, uh, Gajaras could be quite good. Um, garrisoning the mills with all your leftover buffalo could mean that you don't actually need to send your villagers to food. You can actually just have that food trickle coming in. Um, clicking up to Castle Age might be a good option. So that's something that I haven't explored myself yet, but could be could be quite good. Uh, Koreans. Uh, now, why did I decide Koreans here? Villagers with extra line of sight might be useful at the starting town center. Uh, the military, yeah, that's it. The military units, including warships, 20% wood discount. Uh, quite, quite good, I think. Uh, I think Japanese, yeah, with the cheaper building could be good. Don't need to spend as much wood on the second building, the lumber camp or the mining camp. Uh, fish a little bit stronger as well. Quite good there. Berbers have an interesting bonus with the faster moving uh, ships. Uh, so moving them around could be really, really quite useful. Um, next I've got put the Incas. Uh, they do have the uh, housing bonus. So maybe you could save the wood on the house at the beginning. Uh, might not be the best, but could be possible. Persians with the starting, the starting 50 wood could be a good shout. Uh, Aztecs, despite their uh, late game dock is really bad, but uh, you do get fast producing military so that could be quite good. Uh, not too sure exactly. The extra food on the Tatars could be quite good. Not not too sure. Uh, Khmer, the key thing with the Khmer is not requiring those buildings to age up. So you might not even need to spend the wood on the lumber camp or the mining camp until you've actually clicked up. So Khmer could be a, a nice hidden pick there. Although typically, again, you probably use them on a different map. Uh, Celts have the faster wood chopping. Uh, same with the Burmese, with the faster faster gathering there. Bohemians with the faster, uh, with the free mining upgrades. Uh, Malians with the wood discount could be quite beneficial. Uh, I think the Vietnamese with the uh, discount on the eco upgrades, you save wood, I believe. Just have a quick verification. Yeah, economy upgrades cost no wood, so getting bid axe could be a little bit easier. Not a huge bonus, obviously, but any saving on wood could be good. Uh, Spanish, just, just that faster builder. So getting that house up, getting that dock up, getting that TC up quicker, that bonus is sort of even better on Water Nomad. But again, maybe not, maybe not, uh, but could be good to experiment with that. Uh, Bulgarians, they had some bonus that had a possibility. Oh, the uh, blacksmith tech costing half food and blacksmith working 80% faster. So not a huge benefit on the map, but could, 
could be somewhat useful maybe. Uh, I guess a lot of the sieves in this middle region here are unex unexplored, un unresearched, uh, but possible possible options. Ethiopians, what, what was the thought behind that one? Uh, they get the extra gold and food aging up, so fletching could be good. The gold for the uh, the warship, you could go to gold a little bit later. Uh, the Teutons, uh, I don't think they've got a really good bonus. I think it was just the extra garrison of the town centre. Not really, yeah, not really that useful. Um, but the extra garrison might mean if you've got a few galleys diving your TC, you can garrison a bit more, more units. Probably not the best. I might put them in the playable category actually. And the Turks, lastly, I put there as well with the, uh, the gold miners. But again, yeah, Turks probably, probably nothing specific there. So that is hopefully a bit of a guide for playing Water Nomad. Um, I think I'll probably uh, upload a smooth build order at some point, but for me, I, I don't really like to think in terms of build orders. I like to think in terms of uh, principles behind the map and what the, maybe not what the meta is, but just what the general um, play on this map is required. So Water Nomad is quite, quite narrow. You definitely can't go for land units. You definitely won't really see fire galleys working too well and getting that quicker, quicker age up time to feudal ages. Mainly that's your first power spike. That's, uh, that's your first, um, timing, I guess, getting to feudal age first, massing up your galley numbers. You can still lose it by not responding well enough to uh, Castle Age. The opponent might be able to just defend, get Castle Age in, and then have have the superior navy. But Feudal Age is definitely your first one, and then Castle Age is definitely your second one. Uh, most games won't go too far beyond that. If both players are equally matched, it will it can go to Imperial Age. You might see a couple of castles being dropped one one castle mainly um but yeah that is that is how i at the moment f view water nomad and i hope i hope that is useful to some of the players out there um as some of these maps you kind of have no idea what to do and you get into it and you you lose dramatically but that's sort of my experience playing water nomad maybe about 10 times so far And yeah, that will end up the video there, guys. I will uh, see you next time.